Hi, welcome to Anna Prime Recap. You'll witness a terrifying spiritual confrontation between demonic beings and powerful deities. We're at the anime, Miruko Chan, Season 1, Episodes 4, 5, and 6. After a long night of nightmares, Miruko wakes up in the morning and prepares to face another day of observing otherworldly creatures. At the end of her school day, the protagonist goes to a market accompanied by her best friend. They buy a special pudding with chestnuts and go to the cashier to pay. However, while looking for the money, Miruko notices that there is a demonic creature next to the market employee. The monster has a bizarre appearance, with a long neck and several holes in its skin. It always tells the price to customers who come to the shop. The girl was used to seeing these monstrosities, so she just ignored him. Returning home after a long day, Miruko meets up with her younger brother to watch the television program Junji Candelabra, this time featuring a new frame entitled, 100 Horrible Pictures. The presenter shows everyone a photograph of two campers by the river. The man says that this is not a normal photo, because when he zooms in and clarifies the image, a strange face is revealed inside the camper's tent. The girl's brother says that the bizarre face is just something they put in the edit, so it was a setup. Miruko, however, is not of the same mind. She takes advantage of the commercials being shown and decides to buy some drinks. She decides to buy two red bean soups, but when she tries to put the money in the machine, it falls out of her hand. Miruko then stoops down to pick it up, but as she does so, she comes across a spirit lurking there. The creature was only a few inches long and looked like an strange old man. The girl was impressed by it, after all, demonic spirits usually have a terrifying appearance. As she watched it, the little monster ran into an alley and Miruko had the bright idea of pretending to drop her coin again, just to follow the creature and watch it once more. However, she completely regretted her decision when she entered the alley. The young woman came across a creature that looked like an old giant with two heads, and around it were several small demons. The problem was that she now needed the coin that was next to the giant creature. Miruko tries to control her fear and slowly stretches out her arm, but the demon puts his hand close to the object, after which he opens his mouth and releases a green mist that takes over the entire alley. The protagonist couldn't stand the situation any longer and all she wanted to do was cry and run out of the place, but before she could show her fear, a crow flew into the alley and caught the coin in its beak. The girl took advantage of the situation and pretended to run angrily after the animal that had stolen her money, but she was extremely happy that it had happened, after all, she had finally managed to escape from the alley. When she gets home, she tells her brother that she was robbed by a crow and that's why she didn't buy the drinks, and that the animal was responsible for saving her life. Kiyosuke is confused by his sister's explanation and can't really understand what happened. The pair then went back to watching the television program, but two small creatures were amused by a coin that was under the sofa. The next day, on their way out of school, Miruko and Hannah were being watched by a mysterious girl. On the way home they got separated, and Miruko didn't know it, but she was being followed by her brother Kiyosuke. He told his classmates that his sister was acting very strangely, so, at the suggestion of his friends, the boy came to the conclusion that Miruko was hiding out with a boyfriend. The protagonist decides to go to a local library to read something that might help her. She picks up a book on paranormal phenomena, but realizes that it won't be useful and when she returns the book to the shelf, she realizes that there is a demon hiding among the books. The young woman remains calm and puts the book back and goes home. Kiyosuke, who was also at the scene, goes to the shelf where his sister picked up the book to find out what she was reading. The boy approached the area and noticed that there were books about romance, which were just below the horror section. When he realized that it was a romance book, his theory that Miruko had a boyfriend grew stronger and stronger. When she gets home, the protagonist decides to take a bath to relax, but when she gets into the tub, a demonic spirit appears in the water. Wearing an old kimono and with part of his hair covering his face, he stares at the girl. Miruko quickly closes her eyes and when she opens them, she realizes that the spirit is no longer there. Perhaps it was a figment of her own imagination, after all, she has seen many creatures during the day. However, when she looked to the other side of the bathroom, there was a demon standing facing the wall, it was making some grunts, but it hadn't revealed its face. The girl began to feel chills and decided to leave the bathroom. But as she moves, the demon also moves and its grunts get louder and louder. Miruko has no idea how to get out of this situation, but before she can panic, Kayasuka opens the bathroom door and asks if they can take a shower together. Miruko quickly accepted his request, as she had no desire to be alone in that place with a spirit. Kayasuka then asks his sister about a possible boyfriend, but the girl denies that she has any relationship with anyone. During the conversation, the spirit that was on the spot becomes calm again and disappears over time. The next day, the girl wakes up to go to school, and when she opens her window, she sees a creature standing across the street, 
but she carries on as normal. She goes to the kitchen to have coffee with her family, but when she gets there, she sees a gigantic demon surrounding all her relatives. Kiyosuke talks to the girl, but realizes that she is acting strangely again. While the family talked, the demon repeated a few words of the conversation into the girl's ear. Miruko tried to put up with it as long as she could, but decided to go to school without breakfast, saying she wasn't hungry. Before going to school, Miruko walks to the fridge and takes out a chestnut pudding and puts it in the small shrine in honor of her late father. After all, he perished over a year ago and when she saw him in the morning, she tried her best to control herself. The man's spirit approaches her and thanks her for the pudding, he also apologizes for having eaten his daughter's favorite dessert last year. The father's spirit is enveloped in a bright light and disappears along with the demonic creature. A few days later, Yulia Nigoredo, the girl who always secretly watches Miruko, goes to the old exorcist store. The student says she wants to become a disciple. The woman realizes that the girl is still very young and for the time being just hands her a prayer bead. Yulia is happy about this, as she sees it as a positive sign to become an exorcist. The girl walks through the streets and can also see spirits, but only dimly. Since childhood, these creatures have been a part of her life, so she doesn't fear them. However, her dream and goal in life is to become a powerful exorcist to send back to the other world the spirits and demons that disrupt people's lives. The next day, the girl goes to meet her new tutor, but when she gets there, she realizes that the store is closed. A local shopkeeper tells the girl that Takeda Mitsu has returned to the countryside. He tells her that the exorcist said she needed to overcome her own limits. Yulia doesn't accept this, after all, Takeda is the greatest exorcist she's ever met, so she believes it doesn't make any sense. The old man says that Takeda's last clients were the two young women who were approaching her. Yulia realizes that Miruko and Hana are coming, so she quickly hides and watches them from afar. Hana tells her friend that the exorcist store has closed and that the old lady wasn't so good at what she did, after all, the prayer beads she sold Miruko were broken the same day she bought them. The pair then decide to walk home, but Yulia notices that there is a spirit ahead and Hana will probably walk through it, but Miruko says that there is a cockroach on the ground. For this reason, Hana stops walking and goes around the spirit. Yulia then comes to the conclusion that Miruko has the power to see spirits just like her. The next day, after physical education class, Yulia approaches the protagonist and asks for her help in putting away the sports equipment. The two of them go into a room and tidy up, Yulia thanks her for her help, but in the end she closes the door of the room and says that she has been watching Miruko for a long time, and knows that she also sees something that normal people cannot. Just then, several small creatures appear on the scene and Yulia asks if Miruko can see them. The apprentice exorcist reveals that Miruko's ability to ignore spirits is fantastic, and in order to draw an assertive conclusion, she has attracted the little spirits to the place. Before asking the girl for help, Yulia threw several bottle caps on the spot. She knew that small shiny objects attract the presence of these creatures, so she could confirm Miruko's gift of mediumship. She explains that the girl can confess her secret, because she wouldn't tell anyone else, not least because she herself knows what it's like to go through that situation. A few years ago, Yulia revealed her secret to her classmates, but no one believed her, and in the end she became known as the class weirdo. After listening to the whole speech, Miruko continues with the idea of pretending to be misunderstood, but this only makes Yulia even angrier. The protagonist can see the small monsters, but she also sees a frightening creature that was there. The monster has several arms and has taken over the entire room. The creature watches the two girls and listens intently to their conversation. Yulia asks once again if Miruko can see the little monsters on the floor of the room. However, the protagonist realizes that Yulia is unable to observe the giant creature that was standing next to her. Miruko tries to calm her down, but the girl tells her that no one should make fun of her powers, as she has special abilities. Just then, the giant creature becomes agitated and asks several times if the girls can see him, making Miruko tense. Yulia says she will demonstrate her powers as an exorcist and quickly puts the prayer beads on her arm. At the same moment, the monster completely destroys the object on the girl's arm. Miruko thinks of something to get out of that place, then she remembers a wrestling video she watched a few days ago. The girl applies a fighting blow to Yulia, putting enormous pressure on the girl's neck until she faints. The apprentice exorcist wakes up a few minutes later in the infirmary. She shouts that Miruko almost took her life, but the protagonist says that some situations should be ignored for their own sake and asks Yulia to follow this reasoning. She also apologizes for the fighting blow, as she had no intention of hurting her. When she leaves the room, Yulia believes she has been threatened by Miruko. She feels embarrassed by the situation and afraid of the girl who almost ended her life. Hannah meets up with her friend and asks if she really took a girl's life, but Miruko replies that she's still alive. 
After school ends, Miruko walks home alone. However, in the middle of the walk, she encounters a spirit sitting on a staircase. She keeps calm and tries to walk past it calmly. However, the creature manages to grab the girl's arm, and she notices that this is the first time this has happened, so, very frightened, the girl decides to face the spirit, who was actually just a little lady. The old lady can't say anything, just grunts, so Miruko decides to help her get home, after all, she was probably lost. The girl carries the lady on her back and manages to find her residence. When Haruko, the old lady's daughter, arrives on the scene, she gives the poor lady her dentures, which allows her to communicate again. The woman thanks her for the help and explains that the old lady no longer has the same sense as before, she has changed completely since her husband perished, she doesn't remember that she has a family or even her own name. Haruko decides to thank Miruko with some dumplings, but she asks the girl to wait a while, as she's going to get her reward. The girl then picks up her cell phone and decides to tell her family that she's going to be late, but as soon as she turns it on, she realizes that there's a spirit next to her. The creature approaches her and says a sequence of numbers several times. Miruko began to feel afraid and decided to leave, as she was already late. However, when she tried to leave, the old lady grabbed her arm and told her that she had never seen such a device and she was curious to know what a cell phone could do. The spirit gets closer and closer to the little girl and again says a sequence of numbers, he gets closer to the old lady and also says the numbers to her, but she doesn't listen. Finally, the protagonist writes down the sequence of numbers she heard from the spirit on her cell phone, then shows the numbers to the old lady who doesn't say another word. The old lady finally lets go of the girl's arm and walks back to her house. Haruko returns to give the dumplings to the girl, but notices that her mother is walking into an old family room. The old woman opens the doors of a closet and, in front of a safe, puts the numbers she saw on Miruko's cell phone. When she opens the safe, she takes out the present she got from her late husband, a hair comb. She puts it on her head and her expression changes completely, she recognizes her daughter and says she wants to have dinner. Miruko watched everything that happened, and before she could leave, the spirit who had narrated the numbers walked up to her, said thank you and disappeared. The girl looked at the family photos in the room and realized that the spirit was the old lady's late husband. Afterwards, Miruko says goodbye to the mother and daughter, and returns home happy with what she has just witnessed. The next day, on their way home, Miruko told her friend that she wanted to stop at a bakery and wanted Hannah to come along. The girl had realized that there was a demonic creature on the way, so she preferred to take another route. Miruko reflects for a few seconds, thinking that this creature was the most bizarre she had seen in the last few days and that very night she had a terrible nightmare about this monster. The next morning, Hannah realized that her clock had once again stopped at 3 a.m. As she was getting ready to go out, she noticed that the lights in her house weren't working properly. She was puzzled by this because she had only recently changed the light bulbs. On the street, the girl came across a dog that was barking non-stop in her direction. Hannah then went on her way, but next to her was the demonic creature from the day before. The monster was attracted by the spiritual energy the girl had in her body. The creature finds some small spirits along the way and throws them in the girl's direction, causing them to burn when they come into contact with the young woman. Finally, the monster caught the little creatures again and devoured them. Hannah was walking quietly when she came across a little boy crying. She approached him and asked what had happened. The boy replied that his pet had wandered into an abandoned building. Hannah observes the building and identifies that this is the building that everyone believes to be haunted, and at the entrance there are signs warning anyone not to enter. The girl is frightened, but decides to help the boy, as she also likes dogs. She entered the building frightened and walked around the building calling for the dog. While the creature that was following her devoured all the smaller spirits in front of it. Hannah hears some strange sounds and again calls for the dog, at which point several creatures hear the girl's voice and appear on the scene, surrounding her on all sides and watching her intently. Hannah notices that there is something moving under a blanket. She slowly approaches and removes the cloth to see what's under there. A few minutes later, the girl returns to the entrance of the building with the dog in her arms and returns it to its owner. She tells herself that she will never do anything like that again. When she meets Miruko, the protagonist notices that the demonic creature from the day before is around Hannah and asks where her friend were. The young woman explains that she went into a haunted building to rescue a lost dog. Miruko is unhappy about this and takes her friend for a walk in a different place. The two walk to the Maketsudani shrine. Miruko explains that she wanted to visit a place with powerful spiritual energy, but she still fears the presence of the creature that was following her friend, after all, the monster has become even more frightening since the last time she saw it. The pair enter the shrine and realize that they are the only ones there. Hannah places an order and hands over 5 yen and Miruko places another order, handing over 500 yen. 
The protagonist asks in her thoughts for the bizarre creature to get away from her friend. The girl turns around and sees that there are two spirits next to the monstrous creature. At that moment, an otherworldly confrontation takes place inside the sanctuary. The divine beings make a simple gesture with their hands and manage to completely destroy the monster's arms. The creatures of light then create a gravitational field that exerts gigantic pressure on the enemy. Hannah is distracted by the shrine and talks to Miruko, but her friend is trying to observe the fight going on in the spirit world. She wonders if she's receiving any help and wonders who those divine beings are. In the fight, the monster attacks quickly and pierces the body of one of its opponents, it frees itself from the gravitational field and devours the creature of light. After that, a large divine creature appears behind the monster, and without hesitation, the deity explodes and devours the evil spirit. Miruko continues to be impressed by what she has just seen. After the battle is over, the two creatures of light reappear in front of her and begin to speak in a completely different language. Then the divine entity approaches her and says, three times. The protagonist is confused and wonders if those divine creatures will be able to help her in the future. Nevertheless, Miruko had her request granted, as the demonic creature was finally defeated. So, what did you think of this anime? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more anime recaps. See you next time.